talked about people maybe criticizing your age coming into this season, and you've said you've had a little bit left in the tank. You're convinced of that. Uh, how do you feel just about the way that you're swinging it and what you've been able to accomplish over these last four days? Yeah, those people can kiss my ass! <laughs> Thank you, Jason. When thinking about Jason Worth, most people will remember him for his dominant stint with the Philadelphia Phillies that led to a championship. This then transitioned into even more exciting years with the Washington Nationals. But Jason Worth has been so much more than that. In fact, he played for four total MLB teams, and depending on who you ask, he was rather underrated. A one-time All-Star, all while getting MVP votes in four different seasons, like many MLB players, Worth was once a zero and rose to become a hero seemingly out of nowhere. A player that came from humble beginnings before his MLB playing days has since returned to those roots. And today, he can be seen horse racing his prized possession doorknock and now works as an organic farmer in Illinois. This is the story of the career of my favorite player growing up, Jason Wirth. I hope you enjoy the video, and as always, if you haven't yet, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Jason Wirth from the jump was destined to play and make it big time in baseball. Born in Springfield, Illinois, he was a third generation baseball player as his great grandfather, grandfather, uncle, and stepfather all played professional baseball at some point in their lives. The talent Jason had was on display from a very young age and it carried all the way to earning himself a scholarship from the Georgia Bulldogs. However, this was turned down because hey, let's be honest, if Georgia comes calling with a scholarship that isn't football, is it really worth it? Well, you're right, it's probably not. All right, I'm just messing with you. A scholarship from anywhere is absolutely phenomenal, but the real reason is because any kid's dreams were made true when the Baltimore Orioles selected him in the 1997 MLB draft. So Jason Worth chose professional ball over college and sat in the Orioles farm system for about four years, and his best highlight for Baltimore are these photos of him rocking his famous glasses which funnily became a recurring theme for him, as I will point out throughout this video. Jason was then subsequently traded to the Blue Jays as an add-on piece to a bigger trade in 2001. And on September 1st, 2002, Jason would make his MLB debut for the Toronto Blue Jays, and these first two seasons with the team sparked some concern for the young player as he struggled to find playing time, and when he did, his struggles at the plate became apparent. In his first two seasons, his OPS Plus sat at 81 and 71 respectively. And remember, an OPS Plus of 100 is average, so Worth's bat was less than ideal. Following the 2003 season, the Toronto Blue Jays have had enough of this experiment and shipped Worth to his second MLB team in the Los Angeles Dodgers. But before we get into that, I am happy to tell you all about today's video sponsor, Seeky. And you know, summer is officially here, which means the MLB is now in full swing and your favorite players are going at it and trying to make a push for the playoffs. And if you're anything at all like me, you're trying to go to a Phillies game and see Bryce Harper and the boys continue to dominate their competition this year. So that's why I need to tell you about my special hookup for today's video, our good friends over at Seeky. SeatGeek actually rates every ticket on a scale of 1 to 10. Green means good, red means bad, so make sure you look for the green dots before you head to checkout to find the best ticket for you. And every single ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee that is only on SeatGeek's site. This allows you to swap a ticket if you can't make it to an event and get a return. Everyone can use code SRS10 on any ticket at all, whether you're a new or a returning customer on any ticket at all. If you're trying to go to a ball game or if you're trying to go to a concert or festival, you can. No matter how many times you use SeatGeek, whether you're like me and you used it a hundred times, or you're a brand new customer and you used it no times, you can use code SRS10 right now at checkout for 10% off your next order. So take out your phone, open the Seeky app, and go find your favorite team and go get 10% off your next order with our code SRS10. And really, what are you waiting for? It's a limited time offer and we're bringing it to you to help you out. So hey, go get it and go have a good summer with Seeky and from us. And let's get back to the video. All right, getting back to the video, all of us baseball fans know one thing. The Dodgers illegal bat factory that pumps out great players from less than ideal talents is very real and should be investigated by the MLB. Jason Worth was just one of hundreds of players that went to the Dodgers school of batting and the results were positive from the very jump. 76 hits, 47 RBIs, 16 home runs, and an OPS plus of 115 in just 89 games. Like many young players, Worth was starting to understand the league and figure out how to fight back against the best pitchers in the world at the time. And of course, while doing this, he was looking chill as hell the entire time. But the best pitchers in the world are the best for a reason. 
as the next season was a step back in almost every major category, including an increase in strikeouts and the OPS Plus dip down that year. The Dodgers stint did come to a halting end when a torn old no tree quetro, I can't say it, just look at this word, a tore ligament, right? And this ligament tear kept him out for the entire 2006 season. And in 2007, Jason Worth signed a one year $850,000 contract with the Philadelphia Phillies, all of which was guaranteed. But what happened next, almost no one could have predicted at the time. Jason Worth was brought onto the team to be a plug and play bench player. And I'll be honest, he shined in that role so brightly that he proved he belonged to be an everyday player for the Philadelphia Phillies. Every statistical category at the plate skyrocketed during these years, and that will happen when you're surrounded by talents like Chase Utley, Jimmy Rollins, and Ryan Howard in the lineup. Life at the plate just becomes so much easier for Jason and obviously the rest of the team. Pair that with a great Phillies pitching staff and head it into the 2008 season, you had the recipe for a championship caliber team. And before I really dive into this, I think now is a good time for me to come clean and say that as a lifelong Phillies fan, somehow, some way, I chose Jason Worth to be my favorite player from these teams or this era when I was growing up. The team was stuffed with talent, obviously, and Jason was far from the best, but to me, he was my number one. And I'm not really sure how this came to be, but I thought about it really hard, and I think it's purely because he wore number 28, which was my favorite number of my favorite Philadelphia Flyer, Claude Giroux, because I grew up playing hockey. So that's how I got to this point in my life to make this video. And if we look closer at this 2008 season and take the stats from Ryan Howard, Jason Worth, Chase Utley, Jimmy Rollins and Shane Victorino and put them all side by side, you'll get this. And you will see that Jason led the team in zero major statistical categories, but yet has respectable numbers in all of them, further showing the dominance of this Phillies team and the importance of a guy like Jason Worth. But the most important part about this for Jason is for the time being, he found his first home in baseball. And he proved to everyone that he now belonged more than ever in Major League Baseball. I'd say this team was a storybook team that fought through adversity and overcame many obstacles, but that was really not the case. They finished 92 and 70, which was first in the NL East, and proceeded to cruise through the pro season bracket, first by beating the Brewers 3 to 1, and then they took on the mighty Los Angeles Dodgers and smoked them 4 to 1, and lastly, pounced on the Tampa Bay Rays in the World Series and won that one 4 to 1 as well. Funnily enough, that closeout fifth game started on October 27th and finished on October 29th due to a rain delay and postponement in the top of the sixth inning, making it the first and only, I believe, World Series game to not have been played through completion on said day. Jason Worth and the boys etched their name into baseball history and became Philadelphia legends in an instant. For Worth, his stats only continued to rise in the following two years here in Philadelphia, with both 2009 and 2010 featuring more hits, runs, RBIs, doubles, homers, and I mean you name it, it was clear Worth was entering the prime of his career, and his choice of glasses also remained undefeated at this time. The individual success came recognition as well, as in 2009, Worth was an all-star for the first and only time in his career, and finished 17th in MVP voting that season. 2010 was slightly topped with the aforementioned better stats, and it resulted in a 9th place MVP finish. One could argue that the only thing that went wrong for him during this Philly stint was the team's inability to repeat in 2009, where they lost the World Series in 6 games to the evil empire many called the New York Yankees. And in sports, it becomes very hard to maintain your talent due to salary cap and other factors. And in Philadelphia, you become public enemy number one when you pack up your bags and leave town for a division rival. Was it worth it? 126 million over seven years to leave the city you began to blossom in and head down I-95 to DC to play out the rest of your career. And that's what Jason did. He did the right thing for himself and his family, and at the end of the day, you must understand why athletes do that. Getting a bag is always someone's goal at the end of the day. The national teams that Jason joined were less than ideal with losing records in his first two seasons, but furthermore, his first season with the team was spent in a prolonged slump, which can be blamed on adjusting to a new home and enjoying his newfound riches, which is something that does happen quite a lot in sports. His second season was limited by an injury to his left wrist, 
which caused him to appear in just 81 games, and this was his lowest total since 2003. But hey, at least he had this 13-pitch playoff walk-off from that season. From you, Dave. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch. Swing and a long drive! At this point of his Washington stint, people everywhere started asking if he had one of the worst contracts in baseball. Which is funny, looking at $126 million being called a bad contract, when we look at some of today's bad contracts. Maybe these conversations powered his coming seasons, or maybe it was just Jason returning to the player everyone knew he could be. But Worth's 2013 season was one where he came back with a vengeance. He batted 318, had 25 home runs, and had 82 RBIs that season, and had an OPS plus of 153, which marked the highest of his career, and once again, he finished in the MVP votes with a 13th place finish. And his 2014 season was more of the same successes as the previous years, and once again, he earned himself some MVP votes, finishing 18th in the race. However, moving into the 2015 season would be the beginning of the end for Jason as he missed most of that season after joint surgery and suffered yet again another wrist fracture. Skipping to the 2017 season, he missed several months of that season with a hairline fracture in his foot and Worth's time in Washington could be labeled as confusing, frustrating, and ultimately sad for a player that displayed tons of potential and had a myriad of talent but it was all thrown off the tracks by injuries and an awkward adjustment period to boot. To add to this, the playoffs for his time while he was in Washington is maddening. 2012, 2014, 2016, and 2017 all had playoff berths, and in all of them, Washington would fall short in the NLDS. Three times did they lose the series 3-2 in five games, and just once 3-1 in four games, obviously. And just like that, his seven years in Washington were up, and it was time to move on from the city and try to end his career the way he would have wanted. He elected to sign a minor league contract with Seattle and attempted to nurse his body back to full health. However, after a stint on the disabled list with a hamstring injury, he elected to retire from baseball and move on to other things in his life. The many injuries tainted what could have been a much better career, but was still a great one depending on who you talk to. Worth returned to Philly in 2018 for a 2008 Phillies reunion, and he reflected on his time in Philly. And he claimed, quote, There's no animosity on my side. I get it. You leave the team, you go to a division rival, but I enjoyed those games. That's why I always loved playing in Philadelphia because of the atmosphere and the fans. They're unlike any other fans in sports. I remember stretching with Pat Burrell in the spring training of 07, and I always remember that he said, if we can pull this off, this would be the best place to win, and we proved that to be true. And that 2018 reunion was one of the last times Jason would really make a public appearance in baseball. Sure, here and there he'll pop out, but that was the biggest event that he has since been at. And like an injured horse, Jason did wind up limping into the sunset officially, and put baseball behind him and looked forward to what life after baseball might bring for him. For most people such as myself, that's the story of Jason Worth. And it did end there. Sure, you'd see a highlight online here and there and you'd think about his playing days and reminisce of the good times. But beyond that, who really kept up with Jason's every move? Well, reports came out that he'd been happily and quietly working on his ranch as an organic farm in Illinois. And some info about this part of his life, well, it goes like this. During his playing days, he bought about 300 acres of land and took a managing role from afar on the ranch, and every now and then he would check in when he could on breaks and in the offseason, but as soon as he retired, he immediately changed his role from a management role and gave himself a more hands-on role within the company or within the stables, if you will. Some reports say he also became a consultant for other farmers interested in this organic processes. So yeah, a humble post-life career that not many people know about or knew about and was let's be honest, rather boring, but hey, he was having fun, right? However, many fans of horse racing, and more specifically fans of the Kentucky Derby, will know the name of the horse called Doorknock. This was Worth's first high-profile horse, and his stable owned a 10% share in the horse. And in a competitive field of 20 total horses, Doorknock finished 10th, and conversation about this horse was heightened due to many sports fans being like, hey, who owns that horse? And even more saying, Jason looks like a wizard that might help me on my journey. And I said, it's about time his glasses matched his face. But the excitement of rediscovering Jason Worth ended with a storybook ending 
when his horse Doorknock would go on to win the 2024 Belmont Stakes and etch Jason's name into horse racing history. Did winning the Belmont feel better than winning a World Series? Well, we may never know, but in the end, seeing an athlete succeed in a totally different career path is always enough to make somebody like myself just smile and feel good about that story. Jason Worth reached the top of the baseball world and achieved the highest of highs in horse racing. No, he was never the best player on his baseball teams, but he was always the ultimate backbone to winning, a player that every team needed to rely on if they wanted to go far into their season. In baseball, he never stopped working hard, and these efforts went right into his horse racing mentality. He did not win the Triple Crown, but he worked hard enough to help his horse and team win one of the three biggest races, proving once again he belonged in the sport. Jason is not your prototypical superstar, but he is always the hardest worker that cut out a spot for himself when it seemed hard to do. Fans all over see this and can appreciate a player of his caliber, and for me, this video essay is just a glimpse into what made Jason Worth one of my favorite players while growing up. I hope you have all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.